Hey guys, welcome back to the Destiny 2 video. Today's video is the first Warlock build featuring Arc 3.0, and I gotta say, the Arc subclass has always been fantastic on Warlock, allowing for a wide range of different styles of gameplay, but Arc 3.0 is insane on Warlock. It takes the ability spam that's often found on Titan and Hunter with it, and brings it to a whole other level, as Warlocks can, in my opinion, take advantage of some of the aspects of Arc 3.0 the best compared to the other two classes. Today's build is my first rendition on the Arc 3.0 system for Warlock, and it's a personal favorite of mine. Before we get into it, be sure to like and subscribe for more tests to do content like this, and let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the build and any recommendations for future builds. Starting off the build with our abilities for today, I'm personally using Chaos Reach. If you'd rather use something like Storm Trance, you totally can. I'm just using Chaos Reach for higher damage and also pairing it with our exotic, so if you do switch this up, just be mindful to switch up some exotics. As far as abilities go, I'm personally using Healing Rift, just for survivability. I'm also using the ball lightning arc melee just to have some additional range as well as a pulse grenade, but these are really entirely up to you. Any one that you have a preference to works perfectly fine. As far as our aspects go, the only one that I would say is 100% needed is electrostatic mind. This, in my opinion, is one of, if not the best arc aspect in the entire game. In short, whenever you defeat a target with an arc ability, or you defeat a target that's jolted or blinded, it creates an ionic trace. And an ionic trace, along with having some intrinsic ability regen, also makes you amplify it upon collection. This is one of the best arc aspects in the entire game, because basically any single kill that you get while using the subclass is basically going to generate an ionic trace for you. And we're going to be taking advantage of this in a couple ways, as well as adding on new ways that we can stack on ionic sources, meaning that from one kill we can get two, three, and potentially even four ionic traces from it. As far as your other aspect, you can either use the arc soul ability or the lightning surge. I personally lean more towards the arc soul because it adds another avenue for us to generate ionic traces. Well, your melee kind of combines that second ionic trace you can get by jolting a target. I will say that Lightning Surge is definitely better fitted for lower end content because it allows for a much more fast paced and aggressive playstyle. But something like Arc Soul is still really good in all levels of play. And also when you become Amplified, you get an increased fire rate for your Arc Soul and it's actually very noticeable and makes it easily one of my favorite abilities to pair with this build. As far as fragments go, we're using Spark of Amplitude, which allows rapidly defeating targets while we're amplified to generate an orb of power. And this basically stacks on top of Siphon Mods to more or less double your orb of power generation. We're also using Spark of Shock, which allows our Arc Grenade to jolt targets. Spark of Ions, which allows a jolted target to generate Ionic Trace upon being defeated. And again, this does stack with stuff like Electrostatic Mine, for example. And also Spark of Discharge, which allows our Arc Weapon Final Blows to have a chance to generate an Ionic Trace. And as you can see, we have a multitude of sources for spawning Ionic Traces. And again, these can all stack with each other. So with Electrostatic Mine, something like Spark of Discharge and Spark of Ions, for example, we have a situation where killing a single target can generate us two or even three Ionic Traces, and it gets even better than that. Getting right into the armor and the mods for today, starting off on our helmet, we're using Font of Might. In short, whenever we pick up an Arc Elemental Well, it gives us a 25% weapon damage boost to our Arc Weapons. I'm also using a Harmonic Siphon mod, which allows our Arc Weapons to have a cumulative chance to generate an Orb of Power. And again, this then stacks with our other Fragment, meaning we more or less get two Siphon mods for one. And I'm also using a Fusion Rifle Ammo Finder just to help out with our Exotic Weapon for today. But again, you can use Dual Siphon mods, you can use Dual Finder mods if you want, whatever fits your playstyle. Onto our Gauntlets, our first mod is Font of Wisdom. Now, a long time ago, Font of Wisdom was probably the worst mod in the entire game, but due to a few changes, as well as the intrinsic changes to the intellect stat for pve something like font of wisdom is actually really really good with a build like this simply put picking up a single arc elemental well grants us tier 10 intellect for 30 seconds and since we're generating so many elemental wells with this build it basically means that we have a constant supply of arc elemental wells giving us a full 10 tiers of intellect which with something like this combined with all the enemies we're going to be killing with this build means that we get our super back incredibly quickly as far as other mods go you can definitely do something like champion mods uh, something like momentum transfer or focusing strike is really great for the more ability spam focus side of this build i'm also rocking a fusion rifle loader again benefiting our exotic weapon for a chest piece i'm using seeking wells this enables those arc elemental wells that we generate to seek us out like ionic traces and track onto us i'm also rocking a combination of reserves as well as a resist combination with thermoshock for those of you wondering the arc 3.0 bug where titans and warlocks using the arc 3.0 subclass at zero percent damage resistance no matter what their resilience value was is finally fixed so because of that, now your Arc Warlock and Arc Titan should feel much more tankier in PvE, meaning that these damage resists are finally actually worth stacking on top of it. Finally, onto our boots and our exotic for today is Geomag Stabilizers. In short, whenever we damage a target with Chaos Reach, it extends its duration. This basically lets our Chaos Reach go from dealing decent total damage across the whole super to dealing some of the highest total damage of any super in the entire game. For those that don't know, Geomag Stabilizers takes Chaos Reach from an average tier to EDO super all the way to beating something like a Curassa the Falling Star Titan with Thundercrash pretty clean. 
and we're going to be stacking this on top with a damage modifier for our super, meaning that this is going to let our super deal some of the highest TDO in the entire game out of all damage supers. As far as mods go though, I'm personally using Elemental Armaments. If you'd rather swap this out for something like a Melee Wellmaker or Elemental Ordnance, you totally can. I just really prefer the weapon side of this build, so that's why I'm using Elemental Armaments. In short, getting kills with an Arc weapon has a cumulative chance to generate an Arc Elemental Well, which can then track onto us and generate a Font of Might buff for us, as well as increase our Super Regen through Font of Wisdom. As far as other mods, I'm also using a Scavenger mod to benefit our Special Weapon, and then if you want to use any Orb of Power mod, say something like Better Already or something like Absolution, that would definitely fit in with the Orb Genning aspect of this build. Onto our mark, our first mod is Trace Evidence. In short, defeating a combatant affected by any Arc debuff spawns in an Ionic Trace, which again tracks onto us and gives us Ability Regen, as well as proccing a few other effects like making us Amplified. For anyone wondering, Trace Evidence does stack for the other intrinsic effects that we have, meaning that we can kill a single enemy as long as they're debuffed and basically get multiple Ionic Traces just from that one enemy. I do want to note though that some of these other effects such as Spark of Ions or something like Spark of Discharge, they do have a cooldown tied onto them, but again, since we're using all of them, there's basically no situation in which we're not going to get at least one or two every single time we get a kill, meaning that the overall ability spam with this build is absolutely insane. And you can definitely take this whole build the more ability focused route and do something like Fallen Sunstar, for example. I personally prefer the more offensive based side of this, supporting our weapons, and also taking advantage of one of the highest TDO supers in the whole game this season. But again, if you feel like investing the more ability focused side, for example, you can definitely do that. And then our final mod is going to be Thunderous Retort. In short, it grants a bonus to arc super damage while you're amplified or critically wounded. And the thing with this is it lasts until the end of your super activation. Now with some supers, this actually ends up ruining its DPS a little bit. For example, the new Hunter Super, it only actually buffs the thrown impact damage from the arc staff. But for Chaos Reach and using Geomags on top of it, our super drain is very, very, very lengthy, which means that Thunderous Retort buffs 15% of that entire super cast. And as you can see from the damage values up on your screen, it's very noticeable and definitely makes this one of the top tier TDO supers in the entire game. Onto our exotic weapon and our other weapons for today. The first is Delicate Tomb. This is one of my favorite arc based exotics in the entire game and for arc based ability spam builds, this honestly competes with other weapons like Traveler's Chosen. The reason for it is Tempest Cascade. Whenever you collect an Ionic Trace, it overcharges the next shot and allows it to jolt on hit. And again, with a few other intrinsic effects, we're basically able to generate Ionic Traces infinitely with this weapon. And when we combine elemental armaments with Seeking Wells, it allows those Arc Wells to then track onto us to give this thing a 25% weapon damage bonus and also gen our super bag way faster by bringing us up to tier 10 intellect. I don't have the Catalyst done just because of the time constraint revolving around it, but this is already a monster and I'm sure with the Catalyst it gets even better. And the nice thing about this too is that powerful foes and guardians always generate an Ionic Trace. So for example, if you kill a major or a champion, you always have an Ionic Trace coming from that and you can generate multiple from one shot if it's also, for example, affected by an arc debuff or you have those certain fragments proc. And in short, it's very common to generate two or even three Ionic Traces with this thing basically all the time. And again, those Ionic Traces make us amplified and makes our Arc Soul amplified and allows it to shoot faster. It generates a lot of our abilities for us. There's tons of benefits that come from this and this weapon is absolutely perfect for a build like this. As far as other weapons go, something like the Hot Head is great for basically single target damage. I have Explosive Light and Field Prep, and with something like a 25% buff to this thing, it deals ridiculously good damage. Something like Storm Chaser has been a kind of king for arc-based weaponry for some time now, and it's really no secret to why. This thing is absolutely fantastic, and Linears are in a great spot DPS-wise. And then finally for Kinetic Weapons, anything with Demolitionist or Swashbuckler or any melee or grenade focus perk works really, really well with this build. I'd also recommend Thresh, which is normally an overlooked perk in my opinion. While Thresh is normally kind of underwhelming, with a super focused build like this, where we're taking advantage of multiple sources to get our super back really, really quickly, Thresh is perfect for just taking off a little bit less from our cooldown, allowing us to spam our super back even faster. But that's it for today, guys. Let me know what you thought of the build down below. Arc 3.0 is one of my favorite additions to the Destiny 2 sandbox for PvE in a very long time. And with Warlock, it made the already great Arc subclass on Warlock even better. The amplification and ionic traces have made Arc 3.0 absolutely absurd for Warlock, enabling an ad clear level that's just unseen beforehand, and taking advantage of Geomags along with the new seasonal mod Thunderous Retort, grants Chaos Reach from an average TDO super into one of the best in the entire game. As always, this build is fully customizable to fit your playstyle. If you want to swap out something like Chaos Reach for Storm Trance, you can use Storm Dancer's Brace. If you want to spec full into the ability spam of this build, you can definitely use something like Fallen Sunstar, which is the new exotic. Something like Crown of Tempest also works really well for arc-based cooldowns. All in all, this build has something for every playstyle, and is honestly my favorite PvE loadout for Warlock currently, and definitely something we'd be probably spamming for the rest of the entire season. 
honestly a perfect addition with arc 3.0 and it's a build i'm really proud of let me know what you guys thought of it down below and be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed any of the content you see here today i really appreciate the continued support on these builds and i'll catch you in the next video like i mentioned earlier we're gonna be focusing on arc hunter next so stay tuned for that thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you in the next one